A number of high-profile people are leaving California. Joe Rogan just left. Elon Musk is thinking of leaving. Ben Shapiro is leaving. Even James Vanderbeek left. And more are leaving. In this video, we will look at and compare three states or cities that Californians are moving to. People are leaving California in droves. It's nothing new. It's been going on for a long time. Whether it's the high cost of wow. living or the natural disasters, you know, like earthquakes and wildfires, or the ever-growing social problems and political discourse, it's a reality. Hey guys, it's Mac Rogers, broker owner of Albert Rogers Realty right here in Castro Valley, California in the lovely East Bay of San Francisco. If this is your first time on this channel, welcome. This channel's all about living in the East Bay. What is it like to live here? How much does it cost to live here? What do you do in the East Bay? Where do you live in the East Bay? I also give tips and advice for home buyers and home sellers and I also do monthly real estate market updates. If you like this video, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. So let's get on with it. Statistics show that Texas, Arizona, and Washington state are the top three states that people from California are moving to. Let's compare Fremont, California, Austin, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, and Seattle, Washington. I picked these three cities because these are the more popular metro destinations for these states. Let's get an overview or profile for these four cities. Let's start with Fremont. Fremont has a population of about 237,000. Of the four cities we're comparing, Fremont has the lowest population. Austin has about a million, Phoenix close to 1.7 million, and Seattle around 800,000. Let's compare the biggest ticket item that most people look at. That is housing. Now, I probably don't have to tell you this, but Fremont home prices are not only expensive here in California, but it's also ranked as the most expensive or one of the most expensive in all of the United States. Austin, Phoenix, and Seattle are also considered or ranked expensive real estate in their respective states and also compared to the rest of the country, but it's certainly not Fremont expensive. Well, maybe Seattle is a close or a distant second. The median home value for Fremont is around 900,000. This is the type of house that you get for that price. For Seattle, it's around 775,000 and this is the type of house that you get for that price. For Austin, it's around 358,000 and this is the type of house that you get for that price. And finally, Phoenix, around 255,000 and this is the type of house that you get for that price. If you will be renting, the average rent for Fremont is close to $4,000. For Seattle, it's $2,500, Austin $1,600, and Phoenix $1,500. The question that I have been getting a lot lately is future appreciation. There is this concern about how high prices are in the East Bay and the thought of buying at the top scares a lot of people. I can certainly understand and appreciate the situation, however, my advice to all my home buyers has been the same. Buy when you're ready, buy when you need it, buy when you find it. Yes, I know this is considered as an investment, but to me, that is secondary. Let me tell you our story when the real estate market crashed back in, the, in 2008. I saw and knew a lot of people that were either uh, short selling their house or just walking away from it. My friends were asking us why we were holding on to our house when the value was less than what we owed on it. They said that it was like throwing away money. I should just, uh, you know, we should just walk away from it or short sell it and just rent and then buy again. I'll be saving a ton of money, they said. I never got this logic. If you're renting, aren't you in essence throwing away your money? So what was the difference between us paying for our underwater home versus paying cheaper rent? Well, we still get to own the place that we live in we still get to participate in the price appreciation. You can't do that when you're renting. Guess what? Our home that was completely underwater is now higher than when it was at the top of the previous market. And guess what again? We still don't care. Why? Because right now there is no need for us to sell. If we were gonna sell, I would 
absolutely be over the moon because it's a seller's market right now. But like I said, I understand the thinking. So let's look at past appreciation for these four cities in order for us to make an educated guess and see what the future might look like. In the last 10 years, the appreciation for all these four cities has been spectacular compared to the rest of the country. All four are in the top 10% nationally for real estate appreciation. Seattle is the lowest of the bunch, only appreciating a measly 85% over the last 10 years. Fremont and Austin at 92 and 95% appreciation respectively in the last 10 years. And Phoenix, well, Phoenix is up a huge 140% over the past 10 years. But as the disclaimer goes, past performance is no guarantee of future results. Lately, Seattle and Fremont appreciation have been slower than the national average, while Austin and Phoenix are still red hot, both of which are still considered some of the highest rates in the US for real estate appreciation. This is mostly because Seattle and Fremont are in the higher end of the price range and seeing a little bit of weakness. Now, that doesn't mean that the prices are falling or these markets are not competitive. It is still highly competitive and still a seller's market. Moving forward, I think the price appreciation, it will be the same. The East Bay and Seattle will have a lower appreciation rate percentage wise than Phoenix and Austin. This is more indicative of price rather than demand. Let's touch on schools. It's hard to compare schools on a city level, especially with these four cities with extremely different size population. The one thing that I can say about schools is that you have to drill down on a specific neighborhood. All these cities have neighborhoods that have excellent school rankings, as well as on the other end of the spectrum on the lower end. Greatschools.org is a great resource. If you're looking into Fremont, you can certainly send me a message and I can help you with that. Let's compare other expenses between these four cities. Let's check some grocery items. I'm not gonna go through a huge list of grocery items or we would be here forever. If you want a more accurate pricing of grocery items for Fremont, Seattle, and Phoenix, you can go to the Safeway website to check out actual prices. For Austin, they have a grocery store called uh, HEB. It's similar to Walmart which is quite popular over there. You can check out prices over there. Here's a list of the common grocery items and their respective prices. Okay, let's uh, move on to everybody's uh, favorite uh, topic, taxes. Since nobody likes taxes, I will make this quick. I won't make any comments on it. I'll just give you the data. Let's start with state income taxes. California and Arizona has progressive income tax rates. According to NerdWallet, here's Arizona's tax rates as well as California. Texas and Washington, zero, zero income tax. Sales tax, according to salestaxstates.com, Fremont has 9.5% sales tax. Seattle has 6.5% sales tax. These varies depending on the zip code and can be as high as 10.2%. Phoenix has a 5.6% sales tax. Again, this varies depending on the zip code and can be as high as 8.6%. Austin has a 6.3% sales tax. This varies again depending on the zip code and can be as high as 8.25%. For property tax, Here's what the effective tax rate is for these four states. Fremont property tax is around 0.76% of the purchase price. For Seattle, the tax rate is around 1.01%. For Phoenix, it's 0.69%. For Austin, it's 1.81%, which is actually ranked in the top 10 worst states for property taxes. Okay, enough of taxes. I'll end this video by sharing with you a site called areavibes.com. If you go on there, you can compare different cities and it gives you a 30,000 feet view of the different metrics that they use. And if you click on any of the metrics, it actually gives you more explanation or descriptions. It's a very helpful tool. Here's an example of some of the metrics that, uh, the, that they use. Livabil livability. Um, they give a 79% to Fremont and 78% on Austin. Amenities. They give all these cities uh, uh, A pluses. Cost of living, as to be expected, Seattle and Fremont, you know, expensive. And you also have other things like employment, housing. I can't believe that they gave uh, Fremont uh, a C. It should be an F for me. Schools, 
as you can see, Fremont gets uh, A+, Phoenix get, gets an F. That doesn't mean that every, all the schools are bad over in Phoenix. I hope you got some useful information from this video. If you're thinking of moving to Fremont or any of the other city here in the East Bay, we would love to help you out. If you're thinking of moving out of here, same thing. Give us a call, text, email, and we can get you in touch with one of our knowledgeable partners in any city or state. Check out the rest of our videos.